This is your host Danny and this is English Plus, a podcast by Plus Podcast Network. Subscribe to Plus Podcast Network on Apple Podcasts to have access to all our premium shows or become a patron of English Plus on Patreon and have access to all the same shows on our website englishpluspodcast.com. You can find the links to both Apple Podcasts and our Patreon page in the description of this episode. Have you ever gone through a time when it seemed like you couldn't do anything right? If so, then you know how important it is to have someone have faith in you. When a friend, a family member, or a teacher believes you can do better, it can help you try harder instead of giving up. In our story today, Thank You Ma'am by Langston Hughes, a woman sees potential where others might see a problem. So let's dig in. But before we start the story, let's learn a little bit more about the writer Langston Hughes. As a child being raised by his grandmother in Lawrence, Kansas, Langston Hughes began a lifelong exploration of literature and blues music. He later went to Columbia University, worked in hotels, and traveled the world as a cook's assistant on Friders. Hughes was first recognized as a poet while working as a busboy. He left his poems at a table where the poet Rachel Lindsay was dining. Lindsay promoted the young poet's work, and Hughes's career was launched. Langston Hughes went on to become an influential writer of the 20th century. After being discovered, Hughes went on to write novels, short stories, and plays as well as poems. Hughes' work shows a special understanding of everyday people, people who may not be famous or rich, but whose lives are inspiring and valuable nonetheless. And we will see that all clear in today's story, Thank You Ma'am by Langston Hughes. She was a large woman with a large purse that had everything in it but hammer and nails. It had a long strap, and she carried it slung across her shoulder. It was about 11 o'clock at night, and she was walking alone, when a boy ran up behind her and tried to snatch her purse. The strap broke with the single tug the boy gave it from behind, but the boy's weight and the weight of the purse combined caused him to lose his balance, so instead of taking off full blast as he had hoped, the boy fell on his back on the sidewalk and his legs flew up. The large woman simply turned around and kicked him right square in his blue jean sitter. Then she reached down, picked the boy up by his shirt front and shook him until his teeth rattled. After that, the woman said, pick up my pocketbook boy and give it here. She still held him, but she bent down enough to permit him to stoop and pick up her purse. Then she said, now ain't you ashamed of yourself? Firmly gripped by his shirt front, the boy said, Yes, ma'am. The woman said, What did you want to do it for? The boy said, I didn't aim to. She said, You a lie. By that time, two or three people passed, stopped, turned to look, and some stood watching. If I turn you loose, will you run? asked the woman. Yes, ma'am, said the boy. Then I won't turn you loose, said the woman. She did not release him. I'm very sorry, lady. I'm sorry, whispered the boy. Mm-hmm. And your face is dirty. I got a great mind to wash your face for you. Ain't you got nobody home to tell you to wash your face? No, ma'am, said the boy. Then it will get washed this evening, said the large woman, starting up the street, dragging the frightened boy behind her. He looked as if he were 14 or 15, frail and willow wild in tennis shoes and blue jeans. The woman said, you ought to be my son. I would teach you right from wrong. Least I can do right now is to wash your face. Are you hungry? No, ma'am, said the being dragged boy. I just want you to turn me loose. Was I bothering you when I turned that corner? asked the woman. No, ma'am. But you put yourself in contact with me, said the woman. If you think that that contact is not going to last a while, you got another thought coming. When I get through with you, sir, you are going to remember Mrs. Luella Bates Washington Jones. Sweat popped out on the boy's face and he began to struggle. Mrs. Jones stopped, jerked him around in front of her, put a half Nelson about his neck and continued to drag him up the street. 
When she got to the door, she dragged the boy inside down a hall and into a large kitchenette furnished room at the rear of the house. She switched on the light and left the door open. The boy could hear other rumors laughing and talking in the large house. Some of their doors were open too, so he knew he and the woman were not alone. The woman still had him by the neck in the middle of her room. She said, What is your name? Roger, answered the boy. Then Roger, you go to that sink and wash your face, said the woman, whereupon she turned him loose at last. Roger looked at the door, looked at the woman, looked at the door, and went to the sink. Let the water run until it gets warm, she said. Here's a clean towel. You gonna take me to jail? asked the boy, bending over the sink. Not with that face, I would not take you anywhere, said the woman. Here I am trying to get home to cook me a bite to eat and you snatch my pocketbook. Maybe you ain't been to your supper either, late as it be, have you? There's nobody home at my house, said the boy. Then we'll eat, said the woman. I believe you're hungry, or been hungry to try to snatch my pocketbook. I wanted a pair of blue sweet shoes, said the boy. Well, you didn't have to snatch my pocketbook to get some sweet shoes, said Mrs. Luella Bates Washington Jones. You could have asked me. Ma'am? The water dripping from his face, the boy looked at her. There was a long pause, a very long pause. After he had dried his face and not knowing what else to do, dried it again. The boy turned around, wondering what next. The door was open, he couldn't make a dash for it down the hall, could run, run, run. The woman was sitting on the daybed. After a while, she said, I were young once and I wanted things I could not get. There was another long pause. The boy's mouth opened, then he frowned, but not knowing he frowned. The woman said, Mm-hmm. You thought I was going to say but, didn't you? You thought I was going to say but I didn't snatch people's pocket books. Well, I wasn't going to say that. Pause. Silence. I have done things too, which I would not tell you, son, neither tell God, if he didn't already know. So you sit down while I fix us something to eat. You might run that comb through your hair so you look presentable. In another corner of the room behind a screen was a gas plate and an icebox. Mrs. Jones got up and went behind the screen. The woman did not watch the boy to see if he was going to run now, nor did she watch her purse which she left behind her on the daybed. But the boy took care to sit on the far side of the room where he thought she could easily see him out of the corner of her eye if she wanted to. He did not trust the woman not to trust him. And he did not want to be mistrusted now. Do you need somebody to go to the store? asked the boy. Maybe to get some milk or something? Don't believe I do, said the woman. Unless you just want sweet milk yourself, I was going to make cocoa out of this canned milk I got here. That'll be fine, said the boy. She heated some lima beans and ham she had in the icebox, made the cocoa and set the table. The woman did not ask the boy anything about where he lived or his folks or anything else that would embarrass him. Instead, as they ate, she told him about her job in a hotel beauty shop that stayed open late, what the work was like, and how all kinds of women came in and out, blondes, redheads, and Spanish. Then she cut him a half of her ten-cent cake. Eat some more, son, she said. When they were finished eating, she got up and said, Now here. Take this ten dollars and buy yourself some blue sweet shoes, and next time do not make the mistake of latching onto my pocket nor nobody else's, because shoes come by devilish like that will burn your feet. I got to get my rest now, but I wish you would behave yourself, son, from here on in. She led him down the hall to the front door and opened it. Good night. Behave yourself, boy, she said, looking out into the street. The boy wanted to say something else other than thank you ma'am to Mrs. Luella Bates Washington Jones, but he couldn't do so as he turned at the barren stoop and looked back at the large woman in the door. He barely managed to say thank you before she shut the door and he never saw her again. So that was the story and that was Langston Hughes, thank you ma'am. I hope you like it. It's one of my favorite stories, as simple as it may look like, but it's so deep if you think about it. And if you just stop believing that these things are gone, 
Nobody is like that anymore. A lot of people are still good, but we stop believing in the goodness of ourselves and in other people. And now before I leave you, this story reminds me of a poem by Emily Dickinson, which has a similar concept, so I'm going to read the poem to you. The poem is If I Can Stop One Heart From Breaking by Emily Dickinson. The poem goes, If I can stop one heart from breaking, I shall not live in vain. If I can ease one life the aching, or cool one pain, or help one fainting robin onto his nest again, I shall not live in vain. So, I hope you like this short poem too. Emily Dickinson is one of my favorite poets of all time. And now it's time to finish this episode, but let me remind you before I go that you can go to our website, englishpluspodcast.com. You can find the link in the description of the episode if you want to read the story and this short poem as well. You will find them in the link because the link will take you to the custom post I created for this episode. And don't forget to consider subscribing to Plus Podcast Network. And by doing that, you will have access to all our premium podcasts. We have a lot of podcasts including Business Plus, Documentary Plus, Books Plus, and a lot more. You have two ways to subscribe. If you prefer Apple Podcasts, you can subscribe directly from Apple Podcasts and you will have access to all our premium podcasts. Or you can become a patron of English Plus Podcast on Patreon and then you will have access to all the same premium podcasts on our website, englishpluspodcast.com. This is your host, Danny. Thank you very much for listening to another episode from English Plus, a podcast by Plus Podcast Network. I will see you next time.